Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'll be doing something a little bit different. Earlier today, my fiance and I were working on this uh, DIY project at home. We finished it up and we, we decided to go to Stater Brothers. We purchased two 12 packs of Trulies. And that sparked up a debate. He thinks I can get drunk with seven Trulies. I disagree. I come from a family that loves to drink. I mean, I've been drinking for a long time. I can handle my liquor. So I think I can handle 12, no problem. So what we're going to be doing today is after every four Trulies, he's going to give me a sobriety test. I'm going to walk the line, do the number four, all those things. And he's also going to ask me questions so you guys can get to know me since I haven't done a get to know me video. So, if you want to see how many Trulies it takes to get me wasted, please keep watching. And if you haven't subscribed, I invite you to subscribe so you don't miss any of my videos. Alright guys, so to start off, I'm going to start off with the sobriety test so you guys can see my balance and that I'm absolutely sober. I, had, I haven't had a drop of alcohol yet. So, my fiance wants me to walk the line first. So, I'm going to walk the line. All right, now he wants me to do the number four. So, here it is, the number four. We're good. <laughs> Perfect, no alcohol yet. So now we're gonna go on to our first truly. Here is my very first truly, and it is passion fruit flavor, and these have 5% alcohol. So a little more than your average Mexican beer, but less than your IPA. So let's get started with the get to know me time. All right, so I pulled a couple questions out from YouTube Society, the get to know me challenge. Question number one, how tall are you? <laughs> I like to say that I'm 5'2". However, this last time I got uh, measured and she said it was five, one and a half. I'll stick to five, two though. <laughs> Vertically challenged, huh? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, let's see, what question looks good? Do you have any pets? I do, come here, Shorty, come here. I have one cute little Bichon, come here. She's 12 years old, a little old lady. Come here. She's, she's a little camera shy though. <laughs> Grab her. <laughs> she's camera shy. She's just sitting right there. <laughs> this is Shorty Cake. <laughs> and she's 12 and she's a wonderful little puppy. Little old lady. <laughs> All right. So, all right, Jessica, I'm sure all your YouTube followers will want to know, why did you get into YouTube? Actually, I have always wanted to get into YouTube for the longest time, but I never had the, I was always kind of camera shy and I always felt like, I don't know, like, like it wasn't going to make a difference if I joined. I felt insecure about it and I actually saw this other YouTube girl and I really liked how she did her videos I she really inspired me and her name is Claudia and she does cooking videos and that's I always watch cooking videos because that's what I wanted to do a YouTube on cooking I enjoy cooking my family cooks like I come from a family that's always making home cooked meals and specifically like Mexican food so I wanted to share that with everyone. It's not for a following, it's just because I enjoy cooking. And so I finally joined YouTube, YouTube April of this year. Yeah, April of this year. So I've been making videos since April. Okay. So you started off making cooking videos and then you decided to change your, your name and the overall goal of your videos from Cooking with Jess or amateur cooking with Jess to shenanigans with Jess. So what was the reason for the change? So 
So I always get asked a lot of things like my workout routine, my meal preps. I work out every day and so I'm very much into fitness and I'm very much health oriented. Yes, I have a lot of cheat days because I believe that we should have a balance. So I would say I do more intuitive eating, which is why I'm not like, I don't have abs or anything, but I'm into fitness. So I want to incorporate that into my video. I want to incorporate my fitness routines. I want to incorporate um, my meal preps. I want to incorporate a little bit more about my life, such as our DIYs that I've been doing with you and my fiance. We've been doing a lot of DIYs around the house and we don't know what we're doing. We watch YouTube videos and then we try to do whatever they're doing. You know, they've been coming out good. We, we did, um, we skim coated the walls, which means that the texture on the wall, we take it off and then we try to make it smooth. We did this thing called wainscoting and that's when you put a little design on the wall and we're, we took out the carpet and we're going to uh, put in those uh, vinyl life proof um, Flooring. Flooring. Yeah. So we, we do a lot of DIYs and we don't know what we're doing. Like this is our first time owning a home and so we decided that we're just going to do this together and um, in the, and during this whole process we're also building some bonding time together. And we don't have kids yet so we have to take advantage of that. What do you think? I agree. I think uh, yeah we'll, we'll post some pictures so that everyone can see some of the projects we've we've attempted and point out some of the errors that we made uh, so they they cannot make the same errors they can avoid those uh, those hat those little uh, headaches that we had along the way um, yeah and you can also check out my Instagram page at shenanigans underscore Jess so you can see some of my pictures there too alright guys I just finished my first truly so I'm going to put the number one so we know I finished my first truly and for those of you that don't know what it truly is it's um a hard seltzer so it's what like mineral water with 5% alcohol it says it's alcohol from cane sugar filtered water and carbon dioxide so I like truly is because they're only a hundred calories as opposed to like the one 140 250 that you get in normal beer and you don't feel bloated so truly so truly number one the second one is mango flavored I'm excited about this one already on number two mm -hmm. already number two it looks like someone's gonna lose you know what we should have made a bet that's what we should have done what do you want to bet hmm what should we bet yeah I think that if I can get to 12 Trulies, that you would be in charge of dinner. Okay, tonight? Tonight, and you have to chug one in honor of Truly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fine, <laughs> it's a deal. But if you lose and you don't make it to 12, <laughs> sober or you know. Just, but I'm always a happy person, so. Well, passing the sobriety test. Okay. Then you have to make my top three favorite dishes over the next two weeks. Jesus Christ. We have a deal? Deal. <laughs> drink number two. <laughs> All right. How are you feeling on drink number two? Great. Yeah? Yeah, nothing different. Alright. So you've been YouTubing now for a couple months. Is that the terminology? YouTubing? YouTubing. Yeah. Yeah? yeah? YouTubing? Okay. Yeah. Do you, do you consider yourself a YouTuber? Does it feel different? I don't feel like a YouTuber yet. And I, I have a small following, so I think maybe that's why I don't feel like a YouTuber. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it's, it's a hobby. Okay. But I mean, I guess technically I am a YouTuber. <laughs> I do edit my own videos. Tough. It's very hard because I don't really know what I'm doing. Not too tech savvy? No. <laughs> and neither am I, so I'm not a big help. I do my best though. <laughs> what? Or who would you say are some of your favorite YouTubers? Okay. 
So obviously I already spoke about Claudia Regalado. Love that girl. She, I love her spice. She's like the spicy Latina. Love her. I hope to one day meet her. Um, I love, what is it, the hot ones? Yeah, the hot ones with Sean Evans. Oh, Sean Evans, the hot ones, which by the way, we're probably gonna do an episode on the hot ones. You guys, if you guys haven't seen the hot ones, it's awesome, it's hilarious. They bring celebrities in to try out spicy chicken wings. And they go from mild all the way to spicy, and it's a lot of fun to watch. So that that's one of my favorites, and I enjoy watching The King and the Sting with Theo Vaughn and Brendan Schaub. Um, it's super entertaining. I love those guys, and of course, my all-time favorite, Joe Rogan, Jerry. Like that man is everything. He's my favoriteest person in the world, besides you. <laughs> <laughs> Damn right besides me. <laughs> <laughs> so now that, I think now we, in the last couple months, we've become a little bit more of homebodies. We spent a lot more time in the house, either working on stuff or just relaxing and recovering from the week. And a lot of times we're watching Netflix or Hulu or <laughs> something on TV. Amazon. Yeah. What would you say are Two of your top favorite shows. So recently, Working Moms. It's hilarious. You don't have to be a mom to like it. Obviously, I'm, I'm a dog mom, but not a mom mom. And I love it. And I think men would love it too. I mean, I think if you watch it, you would love it. I'm willing to watch it again just because of how funny it is. Fucking hilarious. Um, the second show that I say I like as of now, or like in the past? Let's say all time. Oh, Friends. Friends okay. is my all time favorite. Like, there's no question. Okay. <laughs> what about just now and within the last year? Within the last year, I've seen every show you can possibly imagine. I can't think of one. Um, Oh, actually, I don't know if it counts, but we did watch Sparks, uh, Spartan? Spartacus. Spartacus. And I really enjoy that show. So, I would say as, as of la this whole year, Spartacus. We were, we were definitely late on the boat for that one. I know, it was like 2011 when it came out, and it's now 2019. 11? So. Or 1? Not that. I thought it was 11. You might be right. I forget. Maybe I I'm wrong. But it's definitely a good show. So if you haven't seen it, you have to go watch it. It's on Netflix, right? Yeah, it's on Netflix. Yeah, I think it was Netflix. Yeah. We were definitely late on that one, though. And it was... It was I know. <laughs> we were so late to the conversation. You know, we were just having this conversation the other day where he mentioned that he likes to go watch movies at the theater, so we have something to talk about with our friends. What are you doing? So anyway, as I was saying, <laughs> we were having a conversation that Roger likes to watch movies at theaters, so we have something to talk about with our friends. Because a lot of our friends will watch movies as they come out. I'm more of like, oh, let's just watch it when it comes out so we can watch it at home. You know, eat whatever we want, drink whatever we want. But we did go watch Joker at the theater. Pretty good movie. Really good movie. Really good movie. Joaquin Phoenix? Yeah. He did a great job. It was phenomenal. He nailed it. Yeah. It was definitely different from what I was expecting. I found it to be more, it's more emotional, right? Yeah. More of feelings and emotions and looking at someone who is mentally disabled. Like that one quote he wrote on his notebook, which was um, something about disabilities and people wanting you to act like you don't have them. Yeah. I mean, how are you supposed to act like you don't have a mental illness? You can't. You have it. Yeah. It's definitely a home level. We're yeah. It was, it was really well played, and the timing was great too. Because I mean, right now we have a lot of you know mental issues coming up in the world. With mental all the, illness, with homeless. All, everyone complaining about depression and all that stuff. And they they closed is, a lot of mental uh, hospitals down too. Yeah. Which is not a good thing. So. Um, so, but Heath Ledger is still my top favorite Joker, all time, hands down. Hmm. Who's yours? That's tough. I don't know. I might have a. 
Fucking Phoenix, slightly above Heath Ledger. What? Yeah. What do you guys think? Heath Ledger or Joaquin Phoenix? I should totally submit this question to the king of the thing. It's a pretty good idea. <laughs> yeah. Hope your followers know what you're talking about. <laughs> no, you guys, King and Miss Thing. Go watch it. <laughs> if you have nothing to do and you're at work, you know, you want something to listen to, it's definitely something to like kill the time or if you're cooking or they're funny. They're just so funny. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, truly number two. And just so you guys know, Roger has is on his second truly as well. Okay. <laughs> I just throw that out there. <laughs> Keep in mind, I'm not doing this challenge. I think he should though, right? I mean Someone's gotta run the camera. The camera's on the tripod, FYI. It's, it's gotta be functioning, okay? <laughs> so my third truly is pineapple. So far my favorite. I like mango, but so far my favorite is definitely passion fruit. So far. So let's try pineapple now. That's pomegranate. What? <laughs> You're drunk. So, <laughs> You're, so she made it to three, guys. On my first one. She actually made it to two. <laughs> no. <laughs> it looked like a passion fruit. Like, right? No, like this one is passion fruit. Okay, so far my favorite is pomegranate. Jesus Christ. I'm gonna forgive me. Oh, Alright. Oh goodness. Alright, well. <laughs> we'll be doing the sobriety test pretty soon. Let's see if you even make it past the first round. <laughs> it's currently fall. Fall. And Halloween's around the corner, two weeks away. We, you know, we got, we went out to Trader Joe's and like everybody else, we bought all the, the essentials. The pumpkin beverage and pumpkin coffee and pumpkin cookies pumpkin and everything. pumpkin everything. And personally, I love this, this time of the year because of pumpkin pie. <laughs> but what's your favorite season and why? Oh, that's a tough one. I'm going to say summer. I know. I love pumpkin everything. I love the scents. I love the cinnamon. But you know what? I can have pumpkin everything throughout the whole year. And in California, you don't really get winter. It's not like I get these cold winter nights where I can warm up a, you know, pumpkin spice latte and sit by the fire. I mean, it's no, uh, it's late October and it's 80 degrees outside. Like, no lie, it's just. Summer. Summer's my favorite. I like the beach. I love being at the pool. I love pool parties. I love wearing shorts and tank tops. I love swimming. I love tanning. I love inviting people over for barbecues. I love backyard barbecues and funk music and things like that. So, summer, hands down, my favorite. That's fair. Summer's always fun. It's a fun time. Yeah. It's a great time. Winter's more like you just want to be at home and, you know. Yeah, most of the time you want to be more cozy and relaxing, but winter we get to go snowboarding and go up to the cabins and have a good time, so that's always fun. And we do like snowboarding, so that's true. We haven't been to Mammoth, and I'm hoping to go one day. However, Roger will be going for his bachelor party. Um, so I'll probably have to wait until next year or something. Until I go, unless he wants to take me. <laughs> at some point. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Halfway on my third. You know what? It feels like a race. It feels like I'm being rushed for some reason. And that's probably, if I get drunk faster, that's probably why. Because I'm drinking these so uh, fast. <laughs> Already making excuses? I mean, shouldn't it be like one an hour or two an hour? I don't know. But we should keep that into consideration, right? No. Then I'm drinking them so fast? It, it, that means, it, it, your goal is a 12 pack. That means we're going to be here for 12 hours. That's, that, that, yeah, you knew what you were getting into. I don't know what, I don't know what you were No, you knew what you were getting into. Anyway. 
We'll find out. We will find out. I think the average norm right now that everyone's sending in into your Instagram is seven. That's like the average, which is what I guess. So I don't know. I so, think I think you set the bar a little too high for yourself here. I went live on Instagram and everyone's saying about five to seven. One person now raised it to nine. I still stick to twelve. I feel like I can handle twelve, and I hope I'm right. I think I had a good balanced breakfast today. <laughs> I had sausage, pancakes, and eggs. Um, and before these, I had four tacos: um, chorizo, barbacoa, asada, and pastor. pastor. Oh, pastor was disgusting. I'm never going back there again. I won't tell you guys the name of the restaurant, but I'm not going back there again. Anyway, next hey. question. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. So we just covered the seasons. What about, what about holidays? What's your favorite holiday and why? Christmas, it will always be Christmas. I love that my family always gets together for Christmas. And it's not just a typical like chill Christmas, no. Last year we hosted Christmas for the first time in our house because we just bought our house last year. And my whole family came. It was my aunts, my uncles, my mom, my stepdad, and my dad. Like it was just so nice to have everyone together. My dad and my mom get along and so does my stepdad. So it's it's great. Like it's really makes me really really happy and so having them all under one roof and then food and then we play games i think we did giveaways too for um i forgot what the giveaway was we gave gift cards for something oh for, i think we did for dango and for numbers numbers that they picked or something right yeah i think it was just like a random draw yeah so we did little prizes so that was a lot of fun i think we'll probably do that again this year just it's just fun to give for no reason you know um, we usually do a uh, gift exchange, so we do the, on Thanksgiving we'll pick out names. So we still have money to, you know, give away because out of everyone you're only giving a gift to one person and the kids of course. So I like Christmas a lot. It's a good yeah. time to be with everyone. Christmas is fun. What's yours? Thanksgiving. Over Christmas? They, Christmas has the same amount of food as Thanksgiving. I don't get it. Yeah, kind of. Thanksgiving has a little bit more food. People get a little bit more out there. I, for Christmas, I always it, it's usually tamales. It's tamales or pozole, and that's it. There's ham too. Sometimes, rarely. But you can make it what you want. I mean, you could, but I'm saying what the, what the norm is. So. Let's talk a little bit more about you. What are the, some some of the things that you like to do for fun? No, 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 let's let's go what your daily routine looks like. Monday through Friday, what's your routine normally like? A day in the life of Jess. Yeah. Every day, <clears throat> I wake up at four, 4 in the morning. So, my fiance, Roger, and I wake up at 4 in the morning and we have our little home routine where I put on my gym clothes. He puts on his gym clothes while he walks our baby shortcake, our little dog. I feed her, I get everything set up for her to, to have her breakfast early in the morning. I drive over to the gym, I work out for an hour, I get ready there and I change for another hour. And then I go to work. And I work my eight hour shift, come home and cook and clean. <laughs> He's so lucky. Yeah. <laughs> That's my daily routine. I really, really enjoy working out. Um, it de-stresses me and I do it in the morning because I find that in the morning it I'm more focused in the afternoon. I do do it in the afternoons at sometimes about maybe twice a week and I have more energy as far as like how much more I can lift, but in the mornings it definitely helps me get through the day at work, just mentally. You kind of release all that stress right in the get-go, like ready, go, release it. 
And you know what? The Rock works out at 4 o'clock in the morning, 4.30. So if he can do it, I can do it. <laughs> Fair enough. Hey, Joe Rogan does morning workouts too. Does he? Yeah. Huh. Maybe. I look up to these people. Okay. What about... So when do you find time to make the videos? When are you making your cooking videos and that stuff? How, how does that plan out? So guys, after I get home from work, I set up my little tripod, my lighting, I set up all the ingredients. So it takes longer to make a YouTube video than it does to cook. Because for the YouTube video, you have to like measure everything and lay it out for everyone to see. And then you, you start and you stop and you start and you stop. And, so there's a lot that goes into making a video, like honestly. So it'll take me about an hour to make a video when the meal is really under 20 minutes. Um, so I'll do it during the week. Weekends, I try not to do YouTube videos because I really enjoy my time with my fiance, my family, my friends. I have a really close relationship with a lot of my friends and a lot of my friends are from high school, from, I have one best friend from, when we were like four years old. So I really want to spend my weekends with those I love, not working on anything. I mean, DIYs are fine because I'm bonding with Roger, but otherwise, I try to do my YouTube videos right after work. And then I edit during the weekend. It doesn't take that long. Okay. So, we would have the perfect music for it right now. <laughs> How did you meet? Talk about how you met me <laughs> and how our relationship kind of flourished uh, and grew. It was an interesting. It was very interesting. So <laughs> I met my fiance through an online dating app, and I met him uh, four years ago. And so during this uh, during this time, I just wanted to meet someone that I could go out and do activities with since all my friends were married or taken or whatever. I was the only single one. So whenever we hung out, it was at someone's house. There was no way for me to meet anyone. So I did um, online dating. I met him and at first I was a little skeptical because his profile was nothing but like, just, there was nothing on his profile. It was just funny. It was just a bunch of made up shit. I don't know what he said. I don't remember, but it was just, just nonsense? Nonsense, yeah, there we go. And that's what kind of started the conversation. And he mentioned that he also likes to do outdoor activities and hockey games and baseball games and things like that that I was into. So our first outing, and I called them outings because I didn't want it to be considered a date. Like I told him to be in. I said, we're not dating, we're going on outings. So we went on outings for like a year. So our first outing was of Angel's Game. And we probably spent an hour in the car talking. Um, I showed up with a six pack of beer. He showed up with the tickets. And we just drank the beer in a the car. A five pack of beer. <laughs> okay, it was a five pack because I drank one right before a date because I was a little shy. So I thought, oh, I need liquid courage. So I drank it real quick. And um, showed up with five. Either way, he should be thankful. Um, so we drank our little five pack <laughs> in the car and we talked for an hour. I don't even know about what. And then he mentioned like, oh my gosh, we're going to miss the game. We should get going. So we went to the game. He fed me nachos and that's, that's how it all began. And a year later, I asked him to be my boyfriend, um, because he had asked me three months into our outings to be his girlfriend. I said, no, um, I wasn't ready. So. I said no, and he still stuck around, thank God, <laughs> he still stuck around. Um, and a year later, I, I was ready. So I said, okay, are you ready for this? Like, you wanna be, you wanna be like legit? <laughs> he was like, what do you mean? So we became boyfriend girlfriend, and we just got engaged May of 2019. And we're getting married May of 2020. And we just bought our home, and I can't wait to build a family. Um, we're thinking of starting a family soon as well. So 
That's going to be exciting and you guys will all get to see this. No more drinking for me after that, right? No more, no more truly challenges? <laughs> no truly challenge until maybe after the baby. <laughs> yeah. This is kind of like a midlife crisis for Jess. She's, uh, she's doing this just because she oh sees God. no light at the end of the tunnel. I know, like, next thing you know, when I get pregnant and have babies, I might as well do the truly challenge now. And then we'll probably do a challenge, you know, when I've been sober for a year after I have the baby. It's like, how many beers does it take then? Yeah. Like one. By the way, guys, I don't think this is a real challenge. We kind of just made it up. Yeah, it's not. But it should be hashtag truly challenge. Truly? Sponsor. <laughs> oh yeah, we drink Trulys all the time. All right guys, and this was my third Truly. So, number three. We're I down. must say, it kind of looks like Jess is struggling a little bit. I feel great. I am now on my fourth, but I don't want pomegranate. I want passion fruit. So, I'm gonna swap it. All right. So Jess pulled out her little uh, her little platter of cheese and crackers here because uh, she's, she's starting to feel a little tipsy. That's not true. <laughs> that is a lie. I like to eat either hot Cheetos, chips, or something while I drink. Specifically hot Cheetos with my Modelos or Pacificos or Victorias. I love just munching on hot Cheetos and my beer. I'm not drinking any Mexican beers, so I felt that <laughs> these crackers and cheese and ham were appropriate for my truly. Yeah. Who, who doesn't like to eat when they're drinking? I love, I love munching on something. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. What do you want to know about? <laughs> well, what else would people want to know? What about... You kind of traveled around a little bit in our neighboring states and gone to Vegas and did the whole Vegas thing and have gone to Oregon and visited Portland and enjoyed the the donuts which was a big part of that vacation a little getaway Washington and Seattle mm -hmm. and ate a lot of fish and experienced the spread sporadic weather that hit us, a little bit of rain, a little bit of sun. Yeah, yeah but um, Down in San Diego, up north, you know, we kind of bounced around a little bit everywhere around us. Which uh, short vacation, you know, short trip vacation has been your favorite? That's a tough one. San Francisco had great clam chowder. Then I went to Seattle and I tried their clam chowder. <laughs> oh my God, I was blown away. Um, San Francisco has, reminds me of Seattle in so many ways, like they have a laid back kind of type of vibe. Um, the clam chowder is great in both places, but I will admit, I think, I, I can't really specifically say where my, my favorite clam chowder was, um, I kind of want to lean towards Seattle. Um, Seattle had great fish. Um, we tried the red snapper and that was delicious at the pink door. I think the restaurant was called pink door and literally there's no letters. There's no sign. There's no open close. It's just a pink door that you walk through and it's a restaurant. So that was delicious. Um, I think one of my favorites though, I'm going to say Portland. I enjoyed Portland a lot. We got a cute little Airbnb. We tried a lot of breweries and I love beer, so I love trying new types of beer. The donuts were okay. I know, I know. The donuts were not that great. Even Pips? Okay, so Pips, okay. Pips was delicious. Yeah, Pips was great. Pips was good. I forgot about Pips. How can you forget about Pips? I know, Pips? I, I don't know. But Voodoo Donuts? Eh, yeah. Eh. I mean, it left me yearning for more. Like, I expected more. I expected the donuts to be more fresh. I don't know, they just weren't. Pips had fresh donuts. The line was long. 
Yeah. Like we went in the morning? And we went like on a Tuesday, I think it was. And it was... the line was, how long did it take? It's like 40, 40 minutes maybe? It took a while to get inside. So we Close finally get in, yeah. and they have really good coffees or lattes. Like we had a lattes. turmeric latte. Like they have really uh, different and unique lattes. So I enjoyed that. Okay, Pips, delicious donuts, and lattes. Yeah, by far blew everybody out of the water. Yeah. But and Blue Star also really good. Blue Star was, was good. Yeah. It falls behind Pips. Yeah, definitely. Um, Voodoo though, yeah, I could do without Voodoo. I know, it sucks. Um, they look cute though. Their donuts look really cute. Um, flavor wise, pips. But I think definitely Oregon blew me away. Um, it was a great vacation. Every vacation has been on my birthday. And thanks to my fiance. <laughs> and I think, but the best outing that we've done so far has got to be to have a supai. Have a soup pie was definitely um, an experience and it's in Arizona and we did five days in May, late May, and it's a backpacking experience. So you carry your, you know, 40 pounds of equipment, what is it, 10 miles in, you set up your camp and enjoy, I think there's like six or seven waterfalls, they're beautiful. Um, there's wonderful people that you get to meet. We met a wonderful group of people. We had a great time. We took a little bit of fireball to, to pass the time, you know, because late at night, I mean, what are you gonna do? So we play cards and we drink fireball. Um, and we went to bed early because once, once it's dark, you just wanna go to sleep. You wake up early, you shower at the river, you drink the water there. We filtered our own water. We ate dehydrated food. Um, it's just a wonderful experience. Have a supai, beautiful. It's it's like it looks like you just walked into heaven. Like after those ten miles of like sweating and being so tired, I had bruises on my hips from the backpack. I had um, one of my nails fell off my my toe from it like hitting the um, the boot, the hiking boot. Um, but it was worth it. It just sounds gross, but it was definitely worth it. Um, I, Roger got a heat exhaustion on the way out, 10 mile hike out because there's switchbacks. So walking up, he was like almost dead, basically. Yeah, that was rough. <laughs> yeah, so thankfully someone brought us cold water from the top and um, so you meet a lot of great people. There's so many kind of people that camp out there and you make wonderful friendships and um, it's all about, you know, just bonding. There's no cell, there's no cell phone service. Um, so it's just you and the people you're around with and it, it's a great time. So have a surprise has been my favorite all-time getaway and if I could do it again I would and I'd like to do it before I have my my next baby or whatever <laughs> Your first baby. My first baby <laughs> <laughs> All right guys, so I just finished my number four truly passion fruit. It's pretty good and it's time to do the sobriety test. Only so, took an hour and a half. So let's see how I do my sobriety test and we can continue to number five. All right guys, so I am going to walk the line after my fourth truly and see how I do. And this is the line and here we go. Not a problem. Now I'm going to come back here and I'm going to do the number four. You were supposed to touch your nose when you were doing the number four. Did you say that? Either hand. You did it the first time without me telling you. We're good. Are we good? We're good. <laughs> All right, time for truly number five. Hey guys, so I am now on my fifth Truly, and it is pomegranate. It's quite delicious, one of my favorites. And on to the next question. All right, what's one life lesson you learned that you would like to take with you onto the next life? If I could tell myself, one thing would be not to worry about what others think about you or how they feel about you. 
I think oftentimes, and even in uh, society now, we worry too much about others saying how they feel, or and it stops you from doing a lot of things. And that's one thing that kind of stopped me from doing YouTube years ago um, was my insecurities. I think you should be secure and do whatever it is you want to do. Life is short. Um, you don't know how long we're gonna be here for. For all we know, it could be a year, two years, 10 years, 20, I mean, we don't know. So just do what you please, make yourself what makes you happy and healthy and just keep yourself mentally stable and just do you. So if anything I could tell myself would be like, do you, don't worry about anyone else. Just um, go towards your goals. All right. All right guys, I'm on truly number five. So. Number five. My sixth truly is mango, which I had already. And here we go. Next question. Six more to go. Come on, guys. Alright. What is or what has been your biggest accomplishment throughout your life? So I wanna say I've had many accomplishments. I moved out of my house at the age of 18 and just lived on my own since then. Um, it was difficult. There were times when I didn't even know what I was going to eat. There were times when I didn't have money to eat. But I made it through and I actually, my biggest accomplishment is getting my bachelor's degree. And I got my bachelor's degree in business with emphasis in project management. And I'm gonna say that's my biggest accomplishment because I've always wanted to get my bachelor's degree. I did get a degree in, I got my certification as a licensed nurse, but that wasn't the route for me. And if you don't find the route, like the first time you give it a try, just keep on going and you'll find whatever you're interested in. I wasn't fully invested in nursing, so I left it to take the business route. And I'm very happy with the route that I took. I'm now focusing on my MBA, and I couldn't be happier. My job helps me out with it, and it applies to what I'm doing now. So it's never too late to get your degree. I'm definitely in my 30s, and I got my degree in my 30s. So if you're in your 20s and you don't know what you're doing, it's fine. You'll get there. No. It's never too late. Fear number six, guys, it's a bit of a struggle. Especially when you drink them so fast. I need to emphasize that I'm drinking them really fast. If you pace out your time throughout the whole day, obviously you're not gonna be as drunk as someone like me would. But it's been two and a half hours. First of all, I think it's been less than that, and I'm on my sixth. Next question. Who is your celebrity crush? And you can't pick me for this. <laughs> as weird as it sounds, I'm going to go with Joe Rogan. Is he a celebrity? Because I think he is. And I know he's older, but he's definitely my celebrity crush. It's his mind, dude. I'm in love with his mind. I love the way he thinks, the questions he asks, the just everything. He's it. Are you jealous of Joe Rogan? No, I probably have a crush on him too. <laughs> Joe Rogan, we both have a crush on you. Year number seven. If I drink this and I pass the sobriety test after the next one, I'm a winner. It already sounds like you're slurring your words a little bit there. I disagree. Why'd you get all serious? I think I sound great. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> what do you guys think out there? How does Jess look right now? Loud, to be fair, 
I've been drinking for only less than two hours. Nope, it's been three hours. We started no. at 5.30. It's been less than three hours. 5% alcohol guys, 5% alcohol. And I haven't had food except for these crackers and cheese, so. Otherwise, that's it, you guys, so. Wish me luck. But you did have that full course breakfast, huh? Breakfast, <laughs> pancake, sausage, and eggs. <laughs> it was a long time ago, it feels like it was last year. <laughs> and you had tacos today too. Yeah, I had four tacos. Well, three and a half tacos because the uh, last taco was kind of gross uh, okay i didn't like it now i would want in and out right now though i bet you would or maybe like jack in the box with chicken tenders <laughs> or <laughs> del taco you guys you don't even want to know what i do with del taco like i order eight tacos french fries and a quesadilla i'll lay out the tacos my quesadilla and the fries, and I'll eat the whole thing when I'm drunk. But I'm not there yet, so I don't eat del taco yet. I'm still in and out right now. If this video ends with del taco, <laughs> we know Jess didn't make it. Will it? Dun dun dun. Truly number seven. Truly number seven. This is where everyone, well, not everyone. <clears throat> this is probably the happy medium where everyone thought you'd be giving up. And this you're definitely showing a lot of resilience, yes. And fatigue at the same time. I feel very resilient. Yeah. I like to it's you know, lot. I like to be the underdog. I like to be the underdog and I like to like prove everybody wrong, so So you feel like you have a chip on your shoulder here? I feel like I do. And I and that's motivation enough. In my Instagram, people told me that I could only make it to two and a half. Well, guess what? Seven later, I'm still here. Um, some people said five. I'm still here. So, the underdog. I think I can make it to 12. Well, some people said 16. Do you think you'll make it to 16? I don't I don't know who made it. Who said 16? <laughs> but Ronnie said 16. <laughs> 16? I think it's yeah. 17. But oh. you know what? I'm trying. So, <laughs> beer number seven. All right. It's 8.54 p.m. on a Saturday. Yeah, four hours into this thing. Three and a half. Oh, okay. Poppers will be ready soon. Oh, that's right. So, Roger, my amazing fiance, decided to make us some poppers, jalapeno poppers. And they're cooking in the smoker right now. And the cooking time was anywhere between 60 to 75 minutes. So, I'm super excited to eat those and maybe sober me up. To make it past 12. Hopefully keep you going. Hopefully. We'll see. Yeah. You got some uh, recipes planned for... Uh, or including the smoker. Using the smoker. I do. I'm going to... If any of you have a smoker, I encourage you to get it. My fiance and I love it. Um, smoked burgers are delicious. Tri-tip is delicious. Oh! That hey, means, Google, thank you. That means the jalapeno poppers are ready. And I'm excited for them. Um, the tri-tip is delicious. The tri-tip is by far the best thing in the smoker. I think. The steaks are delicious. Oh my gosh, I forgot about the steaks. The steaks are pretty damn good. So, he usually smokes the steaks and then grills them for a little bit, right? In the cast iron? No, he usually just do them in the grill. I thought you put them in the smoker the last time. No. Well, that was the last time. That's when I did the cast iron thing. That's not the usual. All right. So steaks in the smoker. Delicious. <laughs> so I am on truly number eight. Halfway through. Pineapple. How many relationships have you been in? The question is... How many relationships have I been in? That's the question? Mm -hmm. I've been in four relationships. Four actual relationships. And how do you deal with a breakup? <laughs> how do I deal with a breakup? So, after every breakup, obviously it's very hard. But there is a book that I always have as my go-to, 
And this book is called, it's called The Breakup Because It's Broken. And this book has a lot of, it has comedy in it, it has real stories in it. And this book has actually gotten me through my last three breakups. I love it and it's something that everyone should read if they're going through a breakup. It's called The Breakup Because It's Broken. And um, not every relationship is going to work. Um, obviously some are not meant to be. They're more learning lessons than anything else. And I feel that when you finally found the one, you try your very best to make it work. And to get through these little like obstacles and little things that you go through, um, you're always going to have fights. But nothing is ever too hard to get over when you meet the one because you both get through it together as a team. There's nothing like getting through things as a team versus getting through something alone. So when you're in a team, you can conquer. When you're by yourself, that's probably a sign that you should move on and move on by yourself. Guys, so I am on my eighth truly, and I'm going to do the sobriety test. Let's see how I do on the sobriety test. Feeling a little bit happy. So here's the line. And it looks like we passed the sobriety test. No, so do the do the four. Oh, we gotta do the number four. Yeah, do the number four and touch your nose. And then the other finger. There you go. All right. Cool. So it looks like we're good on truly number eight. Good job. We've got four more to go. <laughs> Are you gonna finish that truly behind you, or? It's a oh, okay. Well, it's close, a close to it. There you go. Well, you mentioned going to Havasu Pie. What other hikes have you done? The other hikes that I've done have mostly been here in the or in the OC. I live in Orange County, California, so I've done Mount Baldy. Um, I've done Peters Canyon. I've done uh, Black Star Canyon. Um, I can't think of any other ones that are done, that are major hikes. Um, I've done, is it hermit crabs? Hermit crabs. Is it hermit crabs? Hermit? We did it together. Which one was that one? In, uh, off of Acacia. Hermit? Hermit Falls. Hermit Falls. We did hermit falls. Um, not hermit crabs. <laughs> hermit falls for sure. Um, I think that's it. Zion was one of my favorites. Well, that's right. We did go to uh, Utah. Is it is Zion in Utah? Okay. So Zion is in Utah, and we actually took a trip past Las Vegas, and we went through um, the six magic mountains, and they have a little, it's like a little uh, museum of these little colored rocks in the middle of nowhere, and they're pink, they're green, they're yellow. They're called the Six Magic Mountains. So we stopped there for a while and then we took off to Zion in Utah. And Zion was pretty awesome. We did Angel's Landing, we did Observation Point, and we did, um, there was one other hike that we, oh, The Narrows. The Narrows was a lot of fun. So you have to rent um, a hiking stick, some hiking boots, and some, what they call it? Some like special socks for the water because you're hiking in the water. And it's a lot of fun. Um, I think that was the best hike we did for the Zion. For me, it was the Narrows. I think you liked the Observation Point the most. Yeah, Observation Point was my favorite. Yeah, so those I think were my favorite hikes as far as Zion goes. As far as the OC goes, I think it would be Mount Baldy. Mount Baldy, it's 10,000 square feet up and um, you definitely need some um, some snacks, 
some water on your hike up. It's, it's about a six hour hike up and down. Um, going down is obviously a little bit better, but going up, you definitely need to take some Tylenol for the headaches because the air is a lot thinner as you escalate up. All right guys, so I am on truly number 10 and this is actually a um, lime flavored seltzer. Actually, this tastes really good. I think I like the lime. Really? Yeah. I think the lime's pretty good. Well, you're also pretty, pretty, you know, pretty buzzed. The lime has a refreshing limeade type of taste. So, unfortunately, I'm going to have to make this my last video. I feel like I've hit my tipping point for the night. It is 11.30 p.m. and I'm so tired. We had an early day today of um, working on the house and then all of this and I'm exhausted and I'm ready for bed. So, as much as I think I can make it to 12, I think I'm going to cut it at 10. How do you feel at the end of this all? I feel happy. <laughs> um, <laughs> I feel very happy and very accomplished. <laughs> I feel like I accomplished more than I thought I actually could. Um, after the seventh one, I'm not going to lie, I was feeling kind of like oh, I'm so tired. I'm so tired. Maybe if I had woken up late and done nothing all day, maybe I would have made it till 12. But I'm exhausted. It's been a long day. We worked in the house for a few hours. And honestly, I just want to go to bed. Um, so more tired than drunk? I feel definitely more tired than drunk. Hmm. Um, however, truly number 10. Um, I'm open to doing the sobriety test at truly number 10. So we'll do the sobriety test and see how I do after truly number 10. And um, either way, I know I beat Roger as he said I would go past 7, which I did. And I know I can hit 12, but again, I'm tired. So I'm going to finish this beer and we'll, we'll do the sobriety test and then we'll end our video there. So would you agree that if you would have drank the Trulies faster, we would have got all 12 done? No, I disagree. There's no way to drink them faster than how I drink them. I was drinking them pretty fast without any food. I mean, it was pretty fucking fast. So no, and he's laughing at me right now. <laughs> <laughs> no. Huh. Okay. So, on to the sobriety test. Well, you gotta finish that tempo first. Oh, okay. And then we'll do the sobriety first. test. <laughs> Time to cut. Alright, guys, so I just finished my truly number 10 and I'm ready to do the sobriety test. So, here we go. <laughs> so, I got the sobriety line. Now we're going to do the number four. Touch the nose. I'm feeling pretty good. What do you guys think? <laughs> so, it looks like I beat this challenge. It looks like I beat my fiance's um, seven beer challenge. I made it to 10, of course. I didn't get to 12 because I'm exhausted. It's been a long day. I'm pretty sure I can drink the last two if I wanted to. However, we're going to end it here. I hope you guys go ahead and do the Truly Challenge. And if you do, go ahead and tag me. Hashtag Truly Challenge. Uh, find me on Instagram, shenanigans underscore jazz. And obviously, thank you for watching. I hope you liked this video. And if you did, please go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss any of my videos. Thanks for watching. Do you want a shotgun a beer? <laughs> I probably should have shotgun beer. Why not? <laughs>